friends, welcome to our second Instapot Facebook Live demonstration. I'm Emily, owner of the Fort Worth Moms Blog, and I'm here with a team member, Miss Krista. Uh, she is a contributor for the Fort Worth Moms Blog, but we also know her as the Instapot Goddess. So she is here again um, to kind of help us with some freezer meals. I know the school season is into full swing and the craziness of the holidays are coming. Mm -hmm. And so having meals that are already prepped and prepared in the freezer and just throwing in the Instapot for quick dinner is what we are all about this season. So take it away, Krista. Okay, we're gonna do four different recipes and I'm gonna go over two different methods of kind of how I like to freeze or cook with the Instant Pot. Uh, the first one, we're gonna actually cook something in the Instant Pot tonight or today. And then after it cooks, we'll freeze it and I'll show you how I like to package it for easy storage. Um, and then we're gonna do a couple recipes that I like to call dump recipes, where we just dump everything into a plastic container, stick it into the freezer, um, and then when you're ready to cook it, like the day of, all you have to do is cook it from frozen into the Instant Pot, set it and go, Perfect. and you'll be good to go. So, Sounds like um, okay, so we're gonna start off, and um, just so y'all are aware, if you would like to have the recipes, and if you'd like to have the shopping list, there is a blog post or on our, mm -hmm. On Fourth Mom's yes. blog page. You went live today and we will post that in the comments of this thread once we're finished. And it has everything you need to know. All the recipes, all the measurements, all that. So first thing we're gonna make is um, chicken tortilla soup in the Instant Pot. Will you grab a pound and a half of chicken breast okay. from the fridge? Um, okay, so um, this is really like a dump and go thing. So we are um, just going to go ahead and start dumping stuff in. Um, as we get going, so this recipe calls for five cups of chicken stock. I'm just gonna dump, I don't like to measure. Um, and no. the Instant Pot, it works for that, so. <laughs> and it totally flips people out. The Instant Pot is really, really forgiving. Um, so you can add more spices or less spices depending on kind of your preference. Um, okay, so we are going to add just a little bit more. Um, the recipe also calls for beans and corn, and it called for frozen corn, but we're just gonna use a can of corn. This is rinsed and drained. Um, one can of corn, one can of black beans, rinsed and drained as well. <laughs> can y'all imagine my kitchen after I cook? Um, we also have one, um, one onion diced. I'm gonna dump in there. So are these meals that you're cooking today ones that your kiddos like? Um, so, I'll tell you how this particular meal I cook with my kids. Mm -hmm. My kids don't like soup they whatsoever. Don't. They don't like soup. However, they love the chicken that comes from the soup. Mm -hmm. So when I take the um, when I take the chicken out to shred it, I will just set some aside, and then I give them that, and then I pull the vegetables out from it and give them that. It's so it's deconstructed. Correct. We have to do that yep. for one of my kids. Yep. She has to have everything deconstructed. And it really it it works just fine. Yep. They're still basically Absolutely. eating the same meal and. Um, yeah, so there's, uh, and I, I like when you cook the chicken in the Instant Pot, you cook the chicken whole, and then you take it out and shred it later on. Um, so you garlic. can do that. This is garlic. We're going to add some chili powder, two teaspoons. I did wash my hands. Oh, you just, just a throw ago. some in your hand that kind of looks so like So that's about teaspoon. a teaspoon. Yeah, we'll do Love another it. teaspoon. And then we're doing uh, some cumin, same amount, two teaspoons. This recipe calls for coriander. I don't care for the flavor of coriander, so we're not putting that in there. Um, but if you like coriander in your soup, you can do that. And that not only is that forgiving like with the Instapot, but that is a good thing about soup. We do eat a lot of soups in my house. Is that you can kind of like fudge a little bit here and there and it still is yummy. Yeah. This is just salt and pepper to taste. So I always like to under salt it in the beginning and then salt it afterwards mm -hmm. for flavor just because everyone else's preference are so different. Um, so we're just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, we need one and a half pounds of chicken breast. So we'll go okay, ahead and yeah. use this one. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't have to cut the chicken breast up at all. If you feel like it needs to be trimmed, you can do that. But typically breast, you don't really need to trim. Do we need this one? We don't need that one. You can pick it up right back. This one big old honking breast that we're just gonna throw in. And let me wash my hands real quick. <clears throat> and I think that's about it. I think we still need to put some lime in. 
uh, and that's it. So this just says one tablespoon, one tablespoon of lime. I'm gonna go ahead and do the juice of one full lime. Um, I like it to have a little bit of extra, a little kick, twang to it. And um, that's it. So we're gonna squeeze that in. At this particular soup, I just made this last night. And instead of doing corn and beans, we added celery and carrots mm -hmm. and green beans to it and um, a lot of onion, and it was delicious. So you can, this is really flexible with what you put in it. And can you like substitute, say, if you didn't have like the canned vegetables or if you had frozen corn or you had corn on the cob and you just kind of wanted to cut off, you can make all those substitutions, just as whatever veggies you want and yeah. however they come. So the main thing is that you have the correct amount of liquid in. Yeah. Um, but with soup, you know that you can make it more brothy or less right. brothy, kind of depending on your, so soup is super forgiving, which is why I literally just dump stuff there in there. So this actually says to use frozen corn. We used canned corn. Yeah, um, really just kind of whatever. whatever just have. rinse it and drain it. Yeah, right. For sure. Um, okay, so the recipe tells us that we need to, um, we're going to put the lid on, lock it, make sure that the vent is to close, and then we're going to turn it on manual, and it says um, for five minutes. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do eight minutes because that's what I did last night and it was perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and just yeah. And we kinda that. made a hearty sauce too. Yeah, we did. It was a really big piece of chicken breast too. The, um, when you're cooking with the Instant Pot, it doesn't matter how much you put into the Instant Pot, it has to do with how thick your meat is. So you could have a two pound ball of meat and it's gonna take a lot longer to cook than if you have two pounds of really thin chicken tenders. Mm -hmm. So that was a really thick piece, so yes. that's a good point. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and let that cook. Um, and then we're going to move back to another recipe that I already made that's already frozen. Um, so we're going to come back here, and this is, if you're following along with our blog post, um, this is the Instant Pot Dairy-Free Pesto Ranch and Chicken, or Pesto Ranch Chicken. So what I did, um, these containers are 60 to 64 ounce containers from Walmart. Three of them were $2, so very inexpensive. Uh, we've labeled it on the front of exactly what to do. So I put the name of the recipe, I put the date, and then I put the ingredients of how to cook it in the Instant Pot. So saute for five minutes, manual for nine minutes, and then natural pressure release for five. And I put some packing tape over it so it wouldn't get messed up um, in the freezer. So all we're going to do, uh-oh, we need to take the, sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, so, this has been sitting out for uh, 10 or 15 minutes, so it's softened around the edges. If you need to, you can always just do it in an ice bath for two or three minutes. All you need to do is get it so that it will release from the side. And then this just fits directly into the Instant Pot. Um, you know how hard it would be if you were trying to go like, <laughs> we don't wanna to try to fit a square peg into a round hole. So that's why these are really, really helpful. Um, so we're going to turn it on to saute for five minutes, and the reason for this, uh, why are we not going down? Oh well. Okay, we're just going to let it go. We're going to saute for five minutes. The reason for that is just to get the liquid in there so that it can go to pressure. So I'm going to turn it on for five minutes, just kind of let it stay, um, and then we're going to go forward and move, make a couple other recipes while that is working. So, for these two recipes, all you need, you don't need any extra bowls. You just need your two containers that you're going to make your recipes from. Um, a lot of times, I like to double or triple a recipe so that I'll make two or three of these and then I'll walk away with two or three of each meal. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, it's really awesome to be able to just throw it in the Instant Pot. It's also really nice um, if you ever need to bring a meal to somebody because they've had a baby or because they're sick, especially if they have an Instant Pot, you can literally deliver it frozen and then they can cook it whenever they yeah. want to. So it makes a really easy way to do that. So we're going to do uh, the Instant Pot root beer pulled pork. So if you'll grab that, um, the pork. I'm gonna go ahead and do all of the liquid and spices first. So we've got a um, half teaspoon of garlic salt, and you could always do garlic and salt if you wanted to do that. Would you like to twist and turn while I'm doing some of the other ones? Because that's gonna take a while. We yeah. need 
about how okay. much am I twisting? About a half teaspoon. Just, I'll tell you maybe. what. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll mm-hmm. just keep going. You know that we don't do measurements, Emily. Um, okay, we've got a sliced onion. Put the bed in and we've got um, three quarters of a cup of root beer, which I would say is maybe a third of this. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I to think me. that's probably enough okay. garlic salt. We can always add more later if we need to. Um, a fourth of a cup of ketchup. I don't think I did. I take my lid off? I did. <clears throat> I have a good question. Okay. Question. When you double or triple a recipe, do you have to adjust cooking time? So if you are actually double or tripling the recipe and cooking it all at one time, um, I always add just a couple extra minutes more. So again, it depends not on the quantity that's in the Instant Pot, but the thickness of your meat. So if you're just doubling the amount of meat, then you really probably don't need to. The one thing that you'll need to keep in mind is that it will take a lot longer to get to pressure. So the fuller the Instant Pot is, mm-hmm. the longer it takes to get the whole thing to pressure. So just, you don't need to vary your cooking time really, but it will take longer mm-hmm. in terms of total time, if that makes and sense. To make a brief explanation, because I didn't understand this whenever I first got an Instant Pot, um, they are way faster than your skillet cooking, way hours faster than your crock pot. But, like, say the cooking time is only going to be 10 minutes, but you have to wait to start that 10 minutes until your Instant Pot get, builds up pressure. And it uses the water or the liquid, the broth, whatever you have put in there as your fluid. It uses that to create the pressure base, and that's how it does the fast cooking. So when she is talking about it's going to take a little bit longer to bring it to pressure, that's what that means. But you would still maybe cook it, like, 12 minutes instead of 10 or roughly that kind of thing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But so it's just something that's a little unique about Instant Pot cooking. And one thing, a little trick that I learned um, kind of down the road, uh, if you're putting stuff in the Instant Pot, go ahead and turn your Instant Pot on to saute, kind of like we have this Mm -hmm. going right now. And that will be bringing, it will be heating up your Instant Pot as you're going. And then when you put the lid on, it will begin to be ready to go. Um, Okay, we've got, we've added our... Root beer, ketchup, tomato paste, and lemon juice. We need to add some Worcestershire sauce. This is a tablespoon. And then we need a tablespoon of honey. Um, And do you know what, Emily? You could, I'm not sure that this is going to fit in there like that. We may need to cut this into chunks. Okay, got it. So maybe I'll switch with you. Yes. What do you want me to use? Um, Either one of those. Okay. We'll just wash it after we get done with it. Um... So we've got a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of flour. If you happen to be gluten-free, um, all you need to do is just substitute all-purpose flour with a regular all-purpose gluten-free flour. And it cooks just fine. We're doing a tablespoon of honey for this one. Tablespoon of flour, and then we're gonna put our meat in. We're gonna shake it up. I don't know that you need to cut it in super small chunks, but okay just to make sure that we can get it. Okay, do you want to put that in first? Yeah. There we go. You ready? Yep. So as Emily is doing that, I am actually going to um, get our label out and I'm going to label it. So I thought I had a Sharpie marker over here. You know what, I think I stole it while ago. And a pen or a sharpie, either one. Can is we have fine. some help from the audience, please? <laughs> Sorry about that. Perfect. It's in there's the a truck. Okay. Here, but you yeah, have yeah, hands right here. Yes. Nope. Other side. Ah. We found it. Perfect. Okay. So, um, can I give you this board too? Yeah. Okay. So um, when we're talking about labeling, you can use any type of label, a mailing label. I had these little brown craft labels, so they fit really easily on there. Um, And I'm going to show you, Janine, maybe we can like hold this up. It's one of the, it's the one that we just cooked. Do you want me to turn this off saute or leave it? Oh, let's go ahead and turn that on to, um, we need to cook it on manual. So turn it off Mm -hmm. and then you'll need to sit the lid on, pause, wait on the labels. Let's go back over here for a second. Okay, sorry. So when it's already hot, when it's already hot, you kind of have to let it sit there. Turn it a little bit more. Turn it a little bit more. So the arrows, there's an arrow right here, Emily, and an arrow right there. That helps. Um, So when 
you're putting it on something hot, you have to, it won't go on immediately because it's already, there's pressure already okay. starting to build. So it took a little bit longer to go on. Um, okay. That is why. So we're gonna make sure the vent is closed. We're gonna turn it on manual, off, manual. Oh goodness, not for, not for 80 minutes. No, not for 80 minutes. I don't know why it's doing that. You're gonna have to push it really hard. Okay, so we're gonna bring that down to nine minutes and we're gonna let it cook. There we go, perfect. Okay, make sure that it's nice and yep. solid. Okay, now we're good. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's go back to the labels. Yep. Um, I like to, um, I'll tell you what I've written on this one. This was for our pesto chicken ranch that we put in there. So I like to put, I'm gonna have you write. Mm -hmm. um, put the name of the recipe first, which is just root beer full pork. And then I also like to put the date on there just so if it gets stuck in the back of your freezer, you're not wondering how long it's been in there. Um, these meals will last about eh, a year or so in your freezer. They last a really hey, long time. Holy cow. Um, as long as they don't get opened up. The worst right. that's going to happen is you might get a little tiny bit of freezer burn on the top, but that it doesn't cause any problems. Okay, so on these recipes, uh, they all have an option for make from frozen. So you're going to look in that section. And there should be a couple recommendations. The first one is going to be to saute for five minutes. So go ahead and write that on your label, saute for five minutes. Then um, manual for 35. And NPR, which is natural pressure release, for five minutes. Um, and then put at the bottom shred pork. Whoops, I ran out of room. Can you? Okay. Shred pork. Got That's it. Okay. Easy. Um, so we will... Do you have a question? Can you remind people what you're making? Yes, we are making pulled pork, the um, root beer pulled pork right now. And how many servings do you think that'll Let's look at our handy dandy <laughs> recipe and tell you. Um, this before. says four servings. I This is a two pound roast. Um, I typically estimate like a quarter of pound of meat per person. Yeah. I think a half pound meat is kind of a lot. So I would say this is probably like four to six. Four to six Perhaps eight. Yeah. If it's kids, for yeah, sure. Easily eight. Yeah. Um, so this fits really nicely in here. We're gonna give it a couple shakes just to kind of get it mixed up. Um, I'm leaking a little bit. And then Emily, if you will put that on the top, and then we're gonna get packing tape. And we're gonna cover that with packing tape. This isn't necessary, but it makes it a lot easier. Uh, or it keeps it from it just protects the label. It, yeah, it keeps it from bleeding in yeah. the freezer. I'll let you do that. Okay. And I want to say something too that I learned because like if we are making pulled pork and like this soup, why in the world is she putting big chunks of meat in Instapot? The amazing thing, another amazing thing about it is it gets your uh, meat to a consistency that it just shreds like a dream. Like the chicken you'll see in a little bit, like it is the easiest thing to shred and the pork will be the same way. So that's what's nice. You don't have to try to go like cutting up all these little teeny tiny pieces for soup and whatnot. You just put the whole thing in there and then it's it's ready to go whenever it's done. Okay. So we were talking about um, how long it takes to get to pressure. So all of this stuff that we put in for the soup was from the refrigerator. So it was all cold. It still hasn't reached pressure yet. Okay. So, um, it does take, it was a pretty full pot, so it is going to take a little bit longer. How okay. big are these instant pots? Are they six quart? These, mine is a six quart. Mine is a six quart. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, six quart. Um, the eight quarts are massive, and if I would say if you have more than a family of six, an eight quart would probably be good. Yeah. I have a family of four, so we don't really need it. So, Emily, this is ready to go in the freezer. Okay, we're going to make our second one, and this is honey bourbon chicken. So, if you will grab uh, those chicken thighs while you're there, Emily. Um, and again, this is a really easy one. I'm gonna work, um, yeah, so we need salt. Can you give me the salt? It's an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Same amount of black pepper. We'll do an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, and you know what? I did not cut up um, peppers over here. We need one more onion. Okay. Which is over there. Um, we just need a half of a cup of diced onion. And again, all these measurements are super rough. Okay, half of a cup of soy 
sauce. Uh, if you're gluten free, you can use this with like liquid aminos or coconut aminos. Um, if you want to make this a gluten free recipe. A little bit more. Mm. And a little bit more. <laughs> okay, half tea, or excuse me, half a cup of ketchup. So you said you wanted this chopped? Yeah, dice. Dice. Mm -hmm. They're asking where the recipes will be posted. These are all, yeah. at, go ahead. They're live today on the Fort Worth Moms Blog website. It's fortworth.citymomsblog.com. But we'll also uh, uh, put the link in for the recipes and all the ingredient lists kind of in the comment section under this video. Um, we also have a, another um, Instapot video that we did back in January, and it's a great how-to with six other recipes of all sorts that really show off all the different ways that you can use the Instapot. And we'll also include a link to that video and post shopping list. We've got it all in one spot in the comments as well. Sorry, will you link to the containers link? Um, the containers link, I don't have a link for that. I can tell you all you need is a 60 to 64 um, ounce round container. Yeah. Um, we can totally find one of it. We'll yeah. These are from Walmart. They are $2 for three of them. I know Dollar Tree also has them. Target has them with all the Ziploc Tupperware type mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, you want more than this? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we need a half cup. Okay, yeah, I don't, I mean, how am I supposed to know <laughs> what a half cup Do, a do a half an onion. A half an onion. Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have I all the liquid stuff. It. She's going to add that in a second. In 12 years, I'll get this finished. <laughs> this is a pound and a half of chicken thighs. It's a little bit under. This is only like a one and a quarter pound um, package, but it'll work just fine. Uh, chicken thighs are, sometimes you need to trim them. Um, I like to trim them after the fact because I feel like the fat that's mm -hmm. in the thigh often yeah. gives it better flavor. So, um, I'm going to choose to not trim it now. I hardly ever actually trim because that's really sad. Yes. Um, because I like the seasoning. That yeah, no, it adds a lot of extra flavor to it, really. <laughs> you can dump all those onions ready? in the container. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure I got everything. Is that good? You're yep, good that? yep, that's great. Okay, um, we're just gonna give this one a little swirl so it gets kind of mixed up and we need to label this one. Uh, this one is honey bourbon chicken. And we need to do uh, Okay, it just says manual for 25 minutes. Okay, easy. NPR for five. Okay, and then you're gonna dice chicken. Can you add that? I can, I made room this time. One more little piece of info. Okay. And um, this one calls for a thickener at the end to kind of thicken the sauce. So you're always gonna do that at the end, otherwise it gets wonky. So two tablespoons of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water. Perfect, okay. Um, and then we're gonna add, put that on there and then we will tape it. And this will be ready for the freezer as well. And it looks like our um, one back there is just getting to pressure and our soup is still not at pressure. So, all right, there we go for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so Emily, what, we've what? got some time, yes, what would you like to do? We, um, and we may not, if we run out of time, we may not, we can just kind of talk about yeah. what we would do at the end, but let's talk a little bit about, maybe we can turn this and run around. Okay. For the gals who don't have an Instapot or are just getting started, the holidays are coming and this will probably be on some mm -hmm. wish list, mm -hmm. just go over like the basics of how you work it. What to do with sure. it. Sure. Um, okay. So um, first, there are there are different types of 
manual pressure cookers, Instant Pot is a brand. So when you hear people call, like referring to an Instant Pot, they're actually talking to this particular pressure cooker. I have not cooked with any other electric pressure cookers, so I can't really mm -hmm. speak to those. Um, but they're definitely more on the market now that this has become so popular. They are. And it's kind of becoming like a kitchen staple. Yes, absolutely. Um, so this is a six quart. Um, there are two different versions of the Instant Pot. There is a Lux and a Duo. Mm -hmm. And the Duo, the only, which is what these are, uh, they have a yogurt feature. So if you want to be able to make yogurt, um, I think there might be a couple other things. I know this has this handy little slot that you can set the lid in mm -hmm. if you want to. I don't think the Duo has that, um, but there aren't tons of differences. So um, really the cool thing about the Instant Pot is they have all of these presets. I tend to do more cooking just from the manual function. Um, so manuals down here, this, has, this gives you the ability to change the pressure from low or high. Um, then we also have a saute feature, which I love, because if you're gonna make, um, like let's say taco soup, and you're gonna be using ground beef, you can saute your ground beef in the pot using the saute feature. You can saute your onions, whatever you want, dump the rest of the stuff in there, and then change it over to manual for it to come to pressure. So I love that you have the ability to do so many different things in there. Mm -hmm. There is a yogurt feature, there's a rice feature, um, cooking rice. We made here. rice in the previous video. We did, yeah. and it is the easiest way to cook rice mm -hmm. in the entire world. Um, means you can get rid of your rice cooker, which is one less appliance that you have to have in your house. I love, I have gotten rid of my slow cooker, my rice cooker, um, what else? I think I had, there was one other thing I got rid of. I can't remember what it was. You're not boiling eggs on the stove in your rack. You can make hard boiled eggs. Yes. You can make oatmeal. I mean, like you can even make cheesecake in one of these things, which is pretty awesome. We should do um, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to be the taste tester yeah. for that one. <laughs> um, so the couple things just people always have questions about. How do you know that it's reached pressure? So uh, there's this little tiny silver, you might want to, bring your phone or bring the phone over here to show um this little itty bitty silver thingamajigger what's the <laughs> what, what would you call that uh, I, don't like a gauge. I don't know uh, it pops up so when it reaches pressure that silver thing will be flush um which you could probably show over on that one if you wanted to is it flush it's not, yeah it's good yeah um and then the vent up at the top you either have it vented to close or vented to open um if it's vented to open you will not reach pressure period, because all the steam is coming out. If you have it closed, that's how it reaches pressure. So if something's taking a really long time, like this, I keep turning it just to make sure, sure. it actually has a good seal. And it, I hear it's starting to go, so it should be reaching pressure soon. But um, I think that's it. Is there anything else that... Well, fair warning that whenever you're going to do what's called a quick release, that means you are um, allowing the pressure to come out at the end because you need something to cook faster or that's what the recipe calls for. Um, it is like, an ex it's not an explosion. That's not a good way to say it. <laughs> but it's like this huge burst of steam and your children will love it. Yes. You call them from all areas of the house to come watch it. Just make sure that so they're funny. away. Yes. Don't let not, them to have their no, no, face no, 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 no. over. It yes, you need to be face. like, everybody needs to be kind of yeah. standing back. But it is like something that my kids think hilarious and so fun. And, and that's another point too is that you don't want to be using this up under your cabinets you want to kind of pull it out because you don't want all that steam damaging your cabinets especially after multiple uses right. so it's always kind of a good island open countertop place to to put it when you're cooking. I keep mine a lot of people say don't do this because of the risk of turning your stove on and melting right. the under part. <laughs> um, but I keep mine on my stove because I really don't use my stove very often mm -hmm. anymore. We use our Instant Pot so much. Um, and then it has the vent underneath it, so all that steam yeah, just you goes into the vent. Yeah. Um, so this is starting to come. It's really Yay. close to getting to pressure. Um, but yes, the kids love it. If you, if it worries you, if you're scared about the steam, you can always put a towel over it and then use or um, open up your vent that way. Um, a lot of people also ask about, um, if it's like, so I grew up thinking, like being scared of pressure cookers, right. like the stovetop pressure cookers, because you always hear about them exploding. them exploding and all that. I've never mm -hmm. heard of that happening with the electric pressure cooker. Um, I don't know if there's safety features that are in it or not, but this is just about to come up to pressure. 
Do you want uh, to tell them about the kit in the back? Yeah, so this, um, there's a little water cup in the back, condensation collector, it just pops out, um, and you just need to, you need to um, empty that every, and clean it. Every, yeah, clean it out. Um, it doesn't always have anything in it. And what about cleaning care for the Instapot as a whole? Um, it's super easy. It is dishwasher safe. You can throw your the ring in it. We don't have a lid that I can take off. There's a rubber link, ring on the inside of it um, that can go in the dishwasher. The pot can go in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, it's not technically, there's no non-stick coating to it, but it is relatively non-stick. I have yet to have easy. something, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that has a lot to do with this, just so liquid based as well. It yes. just keeps that from happening. I did have one thing that was very low in liquid and it got a little bit, um, just got some like crusties sure. on the bottom. So I just poured some water in it, turned it to saute, and let the water lift right. it up. Yep, yeah. and then stuck it, um, dumped it out and stuck it in the dishwasher. Um, one thing that is really helpful is having a second ring, the little rubber rings. You can buy those online. Mm -hmm. If you do make sweet things in your instant pot, the ring tends to kind of hold on to the flavor and to the smell of some of the things. So if you're going to be making oatmeal or desserts or whatever, just buy a separate ring yeah. and then you can just swap those out. Because you don't want it tasting like honey bourbon chicken Correct. Right, when you're making cheese. Honey bourbon chicken or honey bourbon cheesecake does not sound very good. Hey. Um, <laughs> bourbon cheesecake. Yeah, there perhaps, we go. But maybe, yeah. Um, well, honey too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe we do want to speak. But not soy sauce. No. Or no. garlic. Yeah. <laughs> the garlic's out for the cheesecake. Um, yeah, so I can't think, I don't know if anything yeah, else. So yeah, we're getting it. close, I think, over here. Okay. It was that? That's a natural pressure natural release. Pressure. So okay. this particular recipe says natural pressure release for five minutes. So what's going to happen here in a second is it's going to go to zero, and then it's going to start counting back up. And that tells us how long it's been since it stopped cooking. Mm -hmm. So we'll let that count up to five and then you do a quick release after that. So when it says natural release for five minutes, that means after five minutes, you're gonna naturally release yeah. that or uh, manually release that. Um, and then that will be ready to eat. This um, still has, what? Oh, it's still not even counting okay. down yet. Well, let's just so, talk about what we would what do, we do when it's when we would be done. Yep, so, um, when I freeze my um, when I freeze my meals, <clears throat> I do them in Ziploc baggies, and the and reason for that straight from the Instapot. So I like to let it cool first. Yeah, sure. So you're gonna take your lid off. You're gonna let it just kind of sit on the cabinet if you need it to cool fast. Stick a towel in your refrigerator so it doesn't burn the bottom, and then just stick it in your fridge for a while to let it cool down. You just don't want the hot liquid to burn or melt your uh, Ziploc. Um, we're gonna write the directions on here. So for something that's already cooked, there really is no reheat. So I'm just gonna write tor tortilla soup and the date. Um, what's today? The 24th? Mm -hmm. 24th. Okay. Um, you can do this in plastic containers if you want to as well. The nice thing about Ziploc bags, you pour it in the Ziploc bag and then you lay it down flat and you can stack these in your freezer, you can get six or eight of them in one little section. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a really, really efficient way right. to store frozen stuff. Almost everything can freeze this way. Mm -hmm. If you would rather do plastic containers or glass or whatever, yeah, sure. that's fine. Um, so you're just gonna do this and then you are going to make sure that they store flat in your freezer and then after they have frozen and turned into a block, then you can put them upright or however you want to, however you want to serve them. Um, and then when you're ready to eat it, I just like to take it out in the morning and I stick mine in my sink. And then throughout the day when I see that it started to thaw out, I'll stick it in my fridge. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like letting things thaw on their counter. Um, if that's you, then just stick it up in the fridge the night before. Sure. Um, and, and then how off. would you heat it up the day of? Um, so you can do it, you can stick it in the microwave if you want to, you can stick it on the stove pop, you can put it saute in your instant in. pot, yeah. you can saute it, or you could just turn it on to manual that's for true. one minute. So mm -hmm. I would just literally set your timer for one minute, all that's going to do is bring it to boil enough to create steam, and then it'll stop cooking yeah. and you'll be ready to go. 
Um, for tortilla soup, I like to add like a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of cheese on top. Cilantro. This recipe does call for cilantro if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, you can garnish it however you, you want. want yeah. Yep. So now before you would put this uh, tortilla soup in the bag, you would shred the chicken. Correct? Yes. Thank you. And you would just do that with like a couple of forks or whatever right there in the Instant Pot. It is so easy to shred. It's yep. like heaven. It um, is. You can, you can do it in the Instant Pot. Um, I was I like to take mine out mm -hmm. and cut a little um, chunks of chicken. My kids don't like soup, so I can oh, yeah, take the chicken. Like, I like to separate it. My kids are just they don't. Like I'm to just soup, all so. in the pot. We're just cutting it up. Yep, keep on going. Um, her kids like soup, so that yep. works. Uh, you can also, if you don't want to do it in the pot, there's a really easy trick to shred. You put your chicken in a bowl and get out your hand mixer and use your hand mixer to shred it. And the kids can do it that no way. No way. Oh, yes. It does not break your hand mixer. It's no. Totally, that's crazy. It is the coolest right. thing in the world. And then your kids can do it. Yeah. Like, it's super easy for kids I'm to do. It is so fun. Um, that was in my Kitchen Hacks hey, post. Yeah. Um, super easy to shred chicken that way. And then you just dump it back in. Mm -hmm. um, I also have friends that will cook, like, two or three times as much chicken as they actually need. Right. And then oh, they'll yeah, take half sure. of it out and shred it and freeze it. Yeah. And then you just have shredded chicken to add to whatever Salad, you want whatever. anytime. Yeah. That's the good idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Score. Yeah. These are great ideas. Yay. I think that's all we got. Okay. So, that, um, this is, so we're at three. Y'all can tell that that's starting to count up. So, it says... Mm -hmm. L003, that means it's on low. It's not actually cooking the right. stuff that's in there. It's kind of keeping it warm. Just the cool thing is that you can do this to, um, you could set this when you left in the morning and it would be totally safe on your counter all day long. Like just this. like staying at this temperature. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's at a safe enough temperature where it's going to keep bacteria from growing, right. but it's at a low enough temperature where it's not going to continue to right. overcook right. the item. And there'll be like nothing in there, all dissolved, you know. Yeah, no, it'll be totally good. So this is it for, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to pull it out so it doesn't get our counters. Okay, good. Um, but y'all can wash the steam, so it's not going to be nearly as strong as it would be otherwise. And um, when you're doing this, don't let your hand be like over the vent hole because you will hurt yourself. Oh, it already went down. You didn't it get to see it. Home. Sorry. <laughs> it's on my tongue. You're welcome to post them in the comments. Yes. We'll follow up and we will include um, today's blog post for the recipes and shopping list for all of these recipes as well as our previous Instapot video. And we may even toss in Chris's old kitchen hacks post as well for fun. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. You can follow Fort Worth Mom's blog on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. See you later. Bye. Bye.